Okay. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. So we're going to get started with those basic warm ups. Something to note is I'm still dealing with a slight shoulder injury, so I might only do things on one side, but please do them with both of your arms, okay? So let's start at the top as always, starting with our head and neck, okay? Drawing the chin to the chest and lifting back up. Always using about 70%, trying to find a nice standing position, maybe thinking about the weight and the bubbling well, but really relaxing our body and taking a moment to focus on our breath. One more round, and then on the last one, we'll tuck our chin to our chest and come back to neutral. We always go from left to right next, so look over the shoulder, and then the other side, maybe feeling the difference between sides, trying to relax into it. Just taking a moment to connect with our body, with where it is today. One more round. And then come back to center and we'll link it all together. So chin to chest, ear to shoulder, dropping the head back and around. Moving at your own pace. Connecting with your breath. Noticing as it changes when you tilt your head back compared to when your chin's to your chest. When we come to the chin to the chest, let's go the other direction. One or two more circles. Always ending with the chin to the chest and gently lifting back to neutral. Maybe taking a deep breath, finding your balance, and we'll go into those shoulders. So coming back, up, and around. So as much or as little arm movement as feels good. So if you wanna do full arm circles, feel free. Follow your own body. Again, connect with your breath as we do these movements. Feel your lower body heavy as you're moving your arms lightly. And then we'll go the other direction, squeezing the shoulder blades as they come back. Don't ever feel like you have to move at my pace. Move with what feels good to you today. One more circle. We'll lower down and maybe shake out the shoulders, let them find that balanced neutral position, okay? So we're gonna do both arms up. This is where I'm gonna drop one. You're gonna do both arms. So we're gonna do our circles. So circling down, rotating at the top, palm sits on the side. So both arms. I'm just not doing the one because I have a shoulder injury and this movement hurts it a little bit. So you notice how my elbow's staying in three-dimensional space? We're using that rotation here. And then we'll go the other direction. So we're coming from ward off and then we're pressing down. So this should feel like wave hands like clouds. And we're gonna work on this today as we move into our first of our kicks. So we're gonna use that first circle that we did actually, not going this way, going the other way. Okay, last one. And then you can let the arms sink down and come to your side. Moving into the waist. So find stability in your hips, okay? If you want, you can sit on a chair for this if that helps keep your hips stable because we want to use our center. And we can keep our hug a tree shape and just move from side to side using your waist. Or you can let your arms swing freely and looking behind you. But again, we're not letting our legs turn. We're keeping our hips stable and we're using our whole waist middle body. This is what we're talking about when we're turning. Our arms are using the motivation from our waist 
to turn to the sides. And then we'll slowly ease off smaller waist movements, smaller arm movements. And so we come back to center. We return from that hug a tree and let our arms come down. Let's warm up our hips. So circling side to side. So out, back, and around. You can do a smaller circle quicker or really push and extend in a slower circle, whatever feels good. You could pretend like you have a hula hoop. You could maybe perhaps bend one knee just a little bit as you go to that side. So we're never locking out the joints here. And then we'll find the other direction. You can let your arms hang. You can have your hands on your hips. We're just working on opening this up. Good. Maybe swing back for a second before we come to center. So knees and ankles are next, right? So if you want to work them both, we can do this. And we'll touch with the toes. And then we'll circle. So toes stays, ankles rotating, knees rotating. Or if you just want to work your knees and ankles by having them together and circling, do what feels good, okay? So you'd circle one direction. And if you're using one leg, you're gonna not circle as long so then we can switch in a moment. Or do both, okay? Then we find stability on our other leg, touch with the toes, or we draw the knees and feet together and we rotate and circle that way. And then we go the other direction. And then we relax and we're going to shake it out. So if you want to just shake and bounce and you just wiggle everything or draw the shoulders up and really release those lats, releasing any tension, just kind of drawing energy into the body. If you're shaking hard, you want to slowly ease off of that before coming back. Okay. All right, so let's start class by going through what we've been working on. So the whole beginning of the section up until we get on the kick. So we'll start at cross hands and we'll go through high pad on horse. And then today we're gonna work on our first separation kick. But before we do that, we're gonna talk about all the basics again for the kicks and what we're looking for as we move through this section, okay? So let's start in cross hands. Before we start, something to note is you might notice that my left arm is a little bit lower than normal. <laughs> This is due to the injury. Most of you know what these movements are supposed to look like. So please do not follow my little bit of a deviation due to the injury, okay? All right, so let's start in cross hands. We always wanna start with a good position, right? So take a moment, look down at your feet, sink into your legs. Find that relaxed waist, that tucking of the hips before we get started. Feel heavy in the lower half. Lift your arms up and take a deep breath. I want you to focus on your breathing as we move through this section this time, okay? I want you to draw that into the kicks. So shifting your weight, turning, embrace the tiger, return to the mountain. Separating the arms, opening up and showing striking. Roll back, rotate, connect, and then turn. Circle in, touch the forearm for press. Open up the arms, pull back, sit up the palms, and push. Fist under elbow, transitioning just like single whip, except we're gonna push out to the side. Transition step, warding off. Rotate to show grabbing, making a fist, empty stance on the heel. Repulse monkey. Natural step back, pushing off your front heel, number one. Nice circle of the elbow, just like our warm up. Number two, 
Last one. Hands in front of the shoulder, one forward, one back. Diagonal flying, big circle with the arms, stepping to the corner, splitting energy. Raise hands, both arms open and pull back. Change to empty stance on the heel, closing the arms. White crane, circling down, close the arms, step, open them up, white crane. Brush knee, palm faces you, two circles, step, open up, and strike. Needle at sea bottom. Reaching forward, pull back, change to the toes, and sink down. Fan through the back, lifting up, touch on your wrist, step, bow stance, one forward, one back. Turn body, chop with fist, pressing down, protecting your head, make a fist, chop, and then full bow stance with your strike. Parry, block, and punch. Connect out, parry down, step out, parry to the side, show your block, and then punch. Grasping the bird's tail. Small ward off, rotate, ward off right. Roll back. Press. And push. Single whip. Wave hands like clouds. Move back, turning to one side. Show pulling, open up your hook. Shoulder width. Double wide, nice rotation of the arms here. Shoulder width. Make a hook, single whip. High pad on horse, move back, open up your hook, and show striking to the throat. Now check your position here. Empty stance with the ball of the foot. Your right palm edge should be throat level. Your left hand is at your ribs under your chest, and your elbows kind of to the corner direction. Okay, how do we do? How do we feel about high pad on horse? You feel good about it? Yes! <laughs> I love when I ask, how do you feel about it? You guys give a great demo. That's a really good response. <laughs> I think I like that better than the thumbs up, actually. So keep going with that one. <laughs> okay, so then today is going to be our first kick. So we start out the kicking section with what we call separation kicks, and then we move into heel kicks, okay? So these first two kicks are gonna be the same, but then we um, go with the heel kicks for the rest of the section, okay? So let's just talk about the proper kind of stance and body position for a kick, okay? So the separation kick is gonna be slightly different with our foot position. But we know that when we're practicing, we always have one foot that is to the corner direction, okay? And then we have one foot that is straight forward beat in a bow stance that's shoulder width, or an empty stance on the heel, or an empty stance on the toe. So when we do the kicks, there's no difference. We're gonna have one foot that's corner direction, and then our other leg is gonna lift up to the straight direction. Now, when we do this, I'm going to come just a little bit closer. We're not going to leave our leg straight down. 
We're not gonna have it out to the side. We're gonna have it tucked in slightly. Now I'm gonna take my shoe off because I don't think you can see. <laughs> so there's a big difference between having your foot down like this versus protecting your crotch or groin area, okay? So we wanna make sure that when we do these movements, we stand up, but when we stand up, we're gonna stand up and our foot's gonna be turned in just a little bit. Can you guys see that with a bright white sock? <laughs> okay, good. So that's something to note as we do these kicks, okay? That our leg is going to be straight, but we are gonna tuck the point from our knee to our foot towards the inside, okay? So when we're doing these kicks, our body direction is going to follow our foot direction, okay? So it would make it more difficult if we tried to turn our torso to our front leg position, our kicking leg. Everyone stand up for one moment. Find your balance on one leg. So maybe put it to the corner or put it to straight and then your knees to the corner. It doesn't matter. The relationship between our legs is always going to be 45 degrees. Now bring your torso to the corner. Remember to breathe as you stand. Now turn it to straight. Turn it back to corner and straight. Do you feel, yes. <laughs> Do you feel the difference in stability? So this is very important. Our body direction within the kicks is very important for our stability. Now what's also important is our breath. <laughs> we talked a little bit about this. But as we do the kicks, if we really focus on our breath and just continuously breathing and don't worry about what we're doing in the kick, it will make it easier, okay? So this time, as you stand up, inhale and lift up. Exhale and just use the flat of your foot and just kick out a little bit and bend your knee. Okay, try it again on the other side. So we're not changing the foot. We're just gonna use the flat edge of the foot and we're gonna kick out a little bit to the angle, okay? So when you inhale, lift up. Exhale, kick your leg a little bit out, bend your knee. Now, lower back down, take a deep breath, hold it, try to stand up and kick, bend your knee. <laughs> we notice the difference there too? Okay, good. Now we're doing these little exercises so you can experience the difference yourself. I can tell you all of these things, but unless you actually feel the difference, you won't put it into practice, right? So as we do these kicks today, try to remember these things. Try to make sure that your body angle follows your foot that's on the ground. Try to focus on your breathing, okay? The arms will come naturally. You will begin to kick higher and higher. Just kick at a level that is good for you as we move through this, okay? So one thing to note when we do these kicks is that we do want to try to achieve a level with our leg here, okay? So this is what we're going for. Even if you kick low, try to get level. If you can bring it higher, sure, that's great. But we're just trying to get to level kick out, back to level, or kick out, back to level, okay? So everyone can have a different height of kick, but we all want to try to have a level surface with our leg. Yes, that looks good, okay? So how does everyone feel about the basis of a kick? Did anyone practice this week like I asked? Yes, good, okay. Now, do we have any questions on the kicks before we actually move into this movement? So this is just the basics. Hey, Marin, these are the basics of the kicks, okay? So we, I did mention that there's two types of kicks. So the first type of kick we're gonna do is the separation kick. We stand up and we're using the flat of our foot or our inner, our leg here, and we're gonna kick out. It's gonna be kind of a kicking out to the side. So I'm not straight and kicking up like this. I'm turned in and I'm kind of kicking out to the side direction, right? So it's this kind of movement from down to up. We're not going like this with the separation kicks. It's an outward kind of corner-ish movement. 
Yes. Now, when we do a heel kick, this is very different. So we start in the same position. We're still tucked in, but we're gonna curl back our foot, our toes, and we're gonna make it so that we're pressing with that heel edge, okay? So we curl back the toes, showing our heel, and we kick out, okay? So we come from here, our toes pointed down, we curl back the toes, lift the foot up, and then we kick out with the heel. Again, from level, you can just kick straight down. Just make sure you're showing, curling back your toes, lifting your foot up so you can heel kick. And then you come back to the toes pointing down. And we'll talk about this more, but this week you can practice the two different kicks, okay? They're very different. The one is more at an angle. The other one is very much like a strike, a palm strike. It's the heel of the foot is kicking, okay? All right. So now for today's movement, since everyone feels good about the basics of a kick, okay? So I'm gonna do it from the normal direction first, and then I'm gonna turn and face the camera so that you can see it, okay? So we start from high pad on horse, and we're in an empty stance. I'm just gonna demo it first. We're gonna circle both arms, we step out, Less than corner and we circle. We close the arms, stand up, look, kick, bend the knee. Now it might seem like a lot, okay? So let's start with the footwork. I said I was gonna turn and face the camera to show you the arms, but let's just start with the footwork, okay? So everyone start in an empty stance. Your left foot is forward. You're touching with the ball of the foot. We're gonna move back our weight so that we can pick up our foot and draw it in. Now we're gonna step out to that corner-ish direction. We're actually gonna be less, less than corner. And we're gonna move our weight forward. So the difficult thing about this part of the movement is making sure that your footwork isn't crossed, okay? So when we do this, I'll do it from this direction so you can see how the legs line up from this angle. We're in an empty stance. We move back, draw in, and we step out. Now this would be corner for me. I'm a little bit inside the corner and I move my weight forward. Now you can see how the feet are, this one's ahead of it, okay? We're not gonna be here. It's not gonna be here, okay? It's an in-between. You wanna make sure that if you turned your back foot to match, you are on two lines, okay? You wanna make sure, if I do it to the camera more, this, this way would be easier, that you're on two lines. We're not gonna be crossed, okay? This is very important. And there's one thing to note about this bow stance. This bow stance is a little bit different than any other standard bow stance, okay? There's a little bit more space from our feet, okay? So normally we have one foot corner direction, one foot straight, or we have our back foot is to straight and our front foot is to corner, right? Here our back foot is to corner and our front foot it's not straight, it's not corner, it's in between. 30 degrees, 20 some, 27 and a half or something like that, okay? So this is gonna feel different, okay? So let's go into our empty stance again, touching with the toes. One line between the feet, so we're not crossed. Make sure you have a good starting position as we practice. Move back your weight, pick up, Step out, heel touches, balls, foot, toes, weight pours forward. From here, it's a little bit easier because we're just gonna continue moving our weight, our heel comes off the ground, and then we pick up and stand up. Now here, we wanna have that 45 degree relationship. 
We don't want to have our knee open to the corner entirely. We want it less than corner. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, let's. Marion? Hi. Um, so when you said we start off from the empty stance, but our back heel is not to corner, our back foot is not to corner, is that because it's an empty no, stance? No, no, no. Our back foot is to corner. Our back foot is to corner and it stays in that position when we move yes. the other foot. So we're not stepping into a wide bow stance with the shoulder width apart when we step forward and we're not doing an empty stance and it's not on the one line. Yep, this is a transition step. Okay. So this is like fist under elbow. When we step out and we do the ward off and it's not a bow stance, it's a transition step. So this is a transition step. Okay. So we're simply going from our empty stance where we were corner and straight we draw in and we're stepping to something similar to a bow stance for stability because there's a meaning with the arms here, but then we're immediately standing up. So there is a meaning to the movement. We'll discuss that in a moment, but that's why we step to this shoulder width, whereas with fist under elbow, it's not quite shoulder width. And when we step, when we bring our back leg forward, do we bring both knees up I mean, our legs up to the same position, rise and then turn the knee out, or do we rise pointing our knee to the angle in the first place? You mean uh, standing up for the kick? Yeah. Okay, so when we do any sort of kick, like I'm just gonna go say to the straight direction, okay? I'm not gonna come in and open, right? I'm just gonna stand up to that direction, okay? All right, good, good question. That's an important little detail there. And it is more difficult with this movement because we have one foot corner, we have this front foot less than corner. So when we stand up, we're, we're not gonna bring it in like this and up, but it's, it's gonna be hard to just go straight to that direction, right? Because of our footwork. Now, other times in the form, with the heel kicks, we're going already moving straight, so then it's easy to go to straight. But this one's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> Good question. Okay, so let's do it again, just so we feel okay with the footwork before we talk about these big circles with the arms, right? So empty stance, left foot's forward. Good starting position. We're leaning forward, right? We're leaning and pushing off that front leg. But then we have to move back so we can draw in and step out to the side and then move forward. We stand up and then kick if you'd like and bend the knee. Okay, so any more questions about the footwork before we move on to the huge arm circles? <laughs> Do we bring that left foot directly to the corner? The left, when we step out, is that corner or less than corner? It's less than corner. Okay. So if you had straight and corner, you're right in between. I wish I had a third thing to hold. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is where painter's tape on your floor comes in really handy because you can make a little box with an X and then you can practice where corner and straight are and just by kind of stepping onto it, you know? And it's actually a really good tool. A lot of us have done it on our carpet. I will give you a fair warning though. Do not leave it there for long extended periods of time like weeks, okay? A couple days, sure, but you don't wanna be like fighting to get the tape back off your carpet, <laughs> okay? So the arm movements. So we're, the second half of the arm movements is gonna be a little bit easier, but when we do the kicks or before we get to the kicks, that's what's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So our arms are gonna move on a parallel surface, right? They're gonna be on the same level here, okay? So it's gonna be here. So when we do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have one second, guys. You can't see my arms with this color shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm realizing that that's making it very difficult. That's too and funny. You never know what's gonna happen on Zoom, right? <laughs> <laughs> You only realize when you're in front of the camera. And I, I kept that on because I have a dark shirt on, so now you can't see upper and lower, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so from here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mirror you, okay? So this is where Marion's gonna come in handy. 
So what's gonna happen is both arms are gonna come out and then they're gonna cross, okay? So it's gonna make two circles, okay? Everyone did really good. Okay, so it's all of, so what we wanna know with these movements is that we're keeping it on one plane, okay? So we're gonna, we're not using our torso here or our waist, but what I want you to, to know is that that is what's gonna make, drive these arm movements, okay? So what happens is they both open up and then the left arm's gonna extend out in front and the right arm's gonna come across. So what happens is, is we go from a circle to a separation, okay? Good. Yes, so it's a horizontal circling into a separation. So our arms both go out and then one moves forward, one comes in. Then they cross and then it's at separating again. Good. So let's do a few more times and then I'm, I'm gonna take questions because I know Okay, one palms up, one palms down. Then one, the left arm comes out and the right arm comes into your chest. And then we come and we're gonna cross. And then it's one separating, okay? So I'm gonna go from the other direction. I'm gonna change my arms to the normal side, okay? So we open, please forgive me, I gotta go lower here. Ignore the left arm right here. So we open up, okay, the arms open, then one comes out and one comes in. Then we're gonna cross and then it's separating. So can you see, I want you to see that when you do this, it's actually easier on the other side. When you do this, you come to the same plane, but then one arm's moving out and the other one's coming in and then they're both inside and then they're separating, okay? So there's two big circles. You wanna feel your arms are on this horizontal plane, okay? And what happens is, is one palm's already facing up and one's already facing down, but we're circling. It's this circling that we're doing. See how my arms aren't going up or down, even though I'm doing it multiple times, right? So we wanna make sure we stay on this plane. Okay, so essentially our right arm, it goes out to the side, it comes back into your chest, sits up, and then it pushes out, it separates, okay? The left arm goes out, circles around, and comes back. Good, so it's just circles. So if you ever did any sort of martial art or Kung Fu, they have a thing called serving tea, which is on, it's, it's rotating the palm, but it's all about being on one plane. That's what we're doing. The one arm is staying with the palm up and it's circling out and coming back into a ward off position. So the other one is circling out and coming back a little bit past where it was. So we start with it on the edge, right? Cause we're in high pad on horse and we're gonna pull it out to the side and we're kind of still have a flat palm. And then when we cross the chest, we sit it up and then we sweep out and separate to the side. Okay, so let's try to put it together again. I'm gonna keep mirroring you cause I feel like this is the best way with this movement. The circles are kind of crazy, okay? So we're in high pad on horse. We open up the arms. We're gonna one out, one kind of back. We get into this cross position. Our palm is sitting up, right? We're kind of closed, but only for a second because the left, uh, the left arm comes under the right forearm and we pull and separate. So there's not a lot of movement here. It's a separating. So this is where I really wish I had someone to show you guys the meaning, because this is such a unique movement. What happens is, is if someone pushes you or punches to you, they actually end up like, especially with a push, 
you take their arms and you know how your arms are doing this circle well what happens is is their arms then do this circle and they end up like this if that makes any sense at all so you're crossing your arms in this circle but what you're doing within this circle is taking your opponent's arms crossing them so then they fold over and you can kick anywhere you want now I know that's hard to understand, but if you look on YouTube, I'm sure there's a version of Yang Jun showing this at some point in time. It's a really unique movement. So there is a meaning here, and this is why we have to sit up the palm, okay? This is why once we're here, we have our high pad on horse, we open up our arms, we come in and we have our palms seated because this has a meaning of grabbing because we can grab our opponent and twist their arms. So you see how my arms just went from crossed to uncrossed? This is where their arms go from not crossed to crossed. Does, it, does that making sense? I know it's kind of Greek without having someone to demonstrate with you, uh, but just kind of try to understand that there is a meaning here and that's why it's important that you sit up your palm you have this closed position before you separate the arms. And when we end up with these arms, we want them at the same level. We don't want it to feel like roll back where we're down further. It's the same level. And this is because of the meaning, right? This is a different meaning than roll back. This is a crossing. You've taken their arms, you've twisted them, and then you're sending them upside down, okay? So that's the meaning. It's not a punching and a joint kind of lock like roll back. So level arms. So let's do it again. So from the arms, arms only, we open up. We're gonna one forward or one out, one in, and then we cross and then separate. Ooh. How does it feel? Does anyone have any questions? Because that was just beautiful, what I saw. Yeah, how far um, to the left do we pull the left arm when we open? I have it pretty much, you know, as close as I can make my elbow, but I'm poking out to the side quite a bit. Yeah, so, so when we end this movement, what's gonna happen, and I was just gonna talk about this, is your elbow and knee will be in line. So let's talk about lining this up with the footwork, okay? So when we do this movement, Okay, so we're in high pad on horse. Again, I am mirroring you to make this a little bit easier, okay? We're gonna shift back our weight as our arms start to open up. We're gonna draw our foot in and we're gonna close our arms and touch. We're gonna touch and step, okay? And then as we separate our arms, we move our weight forward into our stance. Now, when we end up in this position, your elbow should be in line with your knee. Okay, they should be in the same plane. You're in that ward off arm, so your palm is slightly up, and your right palm is gonna be towards the corner direction. Okay, so whatever that space is for your body, elbow and knee in line, if your stance is shorter, there might be a little less space. If you have a little bit of longer stance, it might be a little bit of a longer space between your arms, okay? Are your shoulders and body kind of angled? Because I can't kind of make them square and I can't really make them completely cornered either. Yep. Okay. So let's talk body angle. So we are straight, right? Sorry guys, I'm switching back and forth here. So, okay, so we are straight. We open up our arms. This is where our waist is turning. Now, if you're just learning this movement, please just do the arms. So we're circling, we're stepping, we're moving forward, and then we're turning and opening. So here, I'm not straight up and down. I'm not leaning, my torso is not straight. My torso is open and I'm leaning into it, right? So one of the things that we've been talking about is body angle or body setting or body position, right? So we were talking about that with high pad on force, how I said we're leaning into it, right? So we had talked about this last week, when we do high pad on horse, we're leaning forward. We're not upright, we're not leaning to the side. 
we lean towards our forward leg direction. So when we finish this position, we are leaning slightly towards our front leg position. Now my body's not square like it would be in brush knee, something like that, but we're leaning this way. So you have one line, but we're looking to where our arms are. Okay, so we go, yeah. What, I'm doing something wrong because when I end it and I pull my left arm back, I am way past my knee. I would almost like not have to, you know, I couldn't pull it back. So what am I doing wrong that my knee and my arm can't? Line so up? you're, you're moving your arms a lot, which is a good thing because you'll eventually rein that back in, but it might be your body position. So if you do this movement and you don't change your waist and you just pull, can you see? Maybe if I go this way. So we're here. So I'm not moving my waist and then I'm just pulling my arms. That's what I'm doing. Versus this. So that comes down to one of the principles as well. And you'll get more into these. Like you'll, these will happen more naturally, but this comes into the back rounded, right? So we always want to keep a, a shape, not a too much of a round, but we never want to have this open. So when we do this movement, if we do like this, then we're causing energy to get stuck in our chest. So then relax, take a deep breath out and just let like relax. Okay, so my movement yes. is wide, I got yeah, it. Yeah, you were just doing big movements, right? So it is a big movement, especially from the beginning of this movement, the arms are rounded, they're large, right? But then this part is a little bit smaller. Okay, that's probably, okay. Yeah, that looked really good. That looked great this time. That was probably gonna be perfect. So let's put it all together, okay? So from high pad on horse, move back a little bit. So we move back our weight, our arms start to open up. We draw in our foot, our arms close, we step. Now smaller arm movements as you move your weight forward and separate. Then from here, it's pretty simple. We take our right arm, and it comes across the body and just closes. So what happens here is our body goes from being very open and then it closes and faces our front foot direction as we close the arm. And then we would stand up, okay? How do we feel? Does anyone have any questions? I have to say it's looking really good. Okay, so from here, when we do this movement, this part here, there's not as much left arm as there is right arm, okay? So once, we, once we're here, both arms are kind of moving in a similar fashion, okay? If I turn this direction, you can see that this arm extends out and this one comes in. Now if I turn again, you're gonna see that this arm is moving a lot more than that le uh, left arm. Does that help anyone? Yeah, so one more time, I'll just face the same direction. So we open up the arms. We're gonna reach out with the left arm, they both close. And then the right arm really reaches a little bit more, it has more movement. Good. And then what does it do? Then the right arm, how does it swing back to cross? So it just comes across and closes. Oh. Yep. So this movement here should feel like cross hands, how we start every class when you get here. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit to make a point, but the arms come up and then down. Okay. So this, this should feel like our warm up, right? We do this in warm up all the time and you have an up to a down. So this is the same thing. We're going up, we rotate the palms at the top and then they sit down. That's it, very simple. And we could close the arms up and then do it again. So it's an up to a down, good. Okay, so you guys have the arm movements there. Now what we need to tune in with those arm movements 
is that our front arm is always going to match our leg position. So what that means is if my kicking leg is straight to the camera, my front arm, when I end my kick, is going to be straight to the camera. We're not gonna be off to the side. We're gonna be straight with this leg. So wherever that leg is, now when we do our first kick, that leg is slightly off of corner, right? So this would be corner, this is slightly left. My arm is going to end up in this position, okay? Now this first kick has a little bit of a different transition than every other kick in the form. When we do every other kick, we open up, we leave the palms in this position, okay? This kick, we open up the arms, we kick, everything arrives together, and as we bend our knee, we turn our left palm up and we sit our right palm here. Sorry guys. Doo -doo -doo. I am all confused from doing it for you guys every direction. So we, yeah. So our right palm turns up and our left palm sits in front of our shoulder. Sorry, doing the mirror image got me a little, <laughs> a little wonky. So what happens is, is that together they rotate and come in. And we'll talk about why uh, on the next class, but essentially it's because we're gonna do the same rotation. We're gonna do the same circling in the next movement. So we do our kick, we kick and land. And then as we bend the knee, we change the arms. And when we change the arms here, remember, we're not chest open, we're back rounded, and our palm is sitting facing up and the elbow has a slight bend into it, it's not locked, slight bend, okay? So from here, we kick out, and then right palm rotates up, left hand comes in front of the shoulder. Now, what should this left hand feel like? What do you guys think? A seated striking hand. Exactly. Okay, so it's gonna have that same feeling as brush knee, something along that lines, okay? And I'm, I'm bringing this stuff up so that even if you're new, you're just hearing it, but if you're here, then make, or if you've learned the form, this is your second or third time in the section, maybe you'll make a new connection, okay? So let's try to put it together. We're gonna move nice and slow and we're gonna stop at checkpoints so that we can know where we need to be, okay? So I'm gonna face the normal direction and we're gonna start in high pad on horse, left leg is forward, find a good stance, okay? So pick up your foot and check. Make sure you have a stance that you can move your weight back from, okay? Our right palm is striking on the edge. Now we're gonna move back our weight as our arms open up. We're gonna draw in, we step and our arms are crossed. Then we move forward and show that separating. Now check your position, elbow and knee in line, right palms to the corner direction. Then we close, our torso closes, we turn and look where our body is facing. Then we're going to stand up to kick. We then look to the kicking direction. The arms open as you kick and then change as you bend the knee. Okay, let's do it one more time and we'll see if there's any questions. So from high pad on horse, left empty stance on the ball of the foot. Make sure it's natural and you can pick up. Right palm striking, left hand is seated under the low ribs here. Move back your weight. The arms open. We cross and we're step. Then we open up the arms as we shift forward, checking our position, right palm to corner, left elbow and knee in line. We're looking towards our right palm direction until we close our arms and we're looking just like we would in cross hands. We then stand up, look to your kicking direction, kick, open the arms, 
Bend the knee and change the arms. Okay. I, I couldn't see your right arm. Was it, was your palm facing up when you ended? Yep. Okay. So we go from open, both palms, and then we rotate. Okay. Yes, exactly. So from seated and rotate up. Because we're gonna do a circle that's very, very similar to what we just did, okay? Any other questions? So if you have a little bit of trouble get lifting your body back from the rear leg up into standing up, that means you're too wide, correct? You're too long. Too long, okay. Not too wide, but too long. Like okay. when you stepped, you extended. So this is why when we started, I said, check your footwork first so that you could pick up and go back. So if you're having trouble standing, and you went from your high pattern horse, drew in and you stepped and you went really long, it's gonna be really, really, really difficult. <laughs> I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at how long you're, you look when you do it and they go, yeah, okay, that's what I do. Yeah, so that's the whole thing, right? The longer you do Tai Chi, the stronger your legs become. So your stance will naturally become longer. And the really cool thing is that these slow movements actually work your legs more then faster movements, okay? So just by moving slowly, you will create the strength and stability in your legs. It, it's kind of like um, what I was doing for physical therapy, standing on a foam mat or something that's instable that has that squishiness to it, that trains all the little micro muscles. So when you train and do Tai Chi on different surfaces, your foot and body has to naturally adjust to these surfaces. So by moving slowly, you're giving yourself a chance to root and connect to the ground and then lift up. Hey, Cheryl? Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that your arms are crossing and uncrossing before you move your, uh, your right leg. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it is all um, your arms, you're, you're open, yeah. you draw in, you cross when you step. And then they open and your weights forward. Then okay. they cross again. Then you stand up. Then they uncross. Okay. The right leg doesn't move until your hands are crossed. Okay. Yes. You do not pick up your leg, your kicking leg until your arms are closed. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good question. Any other questions about this? I know this one's a little bit harder. We will review this next week. Okay. Because once you understand this circle, it will make the next one easier. <laughs> Okay, so we're kind of out of time. Man, I love the kicking section. I could just talk about this forever. So let's just, let's do it again. Single whip, high pad on horse, separation kick. That way we can step out into a natural stance for high pad on horse so we can make good stances for the rest of it, okay? So single whip. Nice natural stance. Remember, don't just step out. Sink into your leg and have a good starting position. Left leg forward, left arm striking. Move back your weight, open up the hook, pick up, change to the ball of the foot, one arm forward, one back. Shift your weight back, the arms open up, draw in. They're crossed when you step, and then they separate when you move your weight forward. Cross the arms, close them, then stand up, look to the kicking direction, Open the arms, kick, bend the knee, change the arms. Okay. It was great work today, guys. That is a hard, hard way to start the kicking section. All right. So if you get a chance this week, really try to practice that, okay? Even just practice the kicks again because that's going to help. And if you do anything during your practice, breathe, okay? <laughs> just breathe. That's the key, all right? So next week we'll work on the second separation kick, but we'll do some good review before we do that, okay? All right, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great class. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> you explain everything so beautifully.